Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back. Over my many years of being a game dev, I've collected a bunch of resources to make game dev a little more easy and fun. Now, a couple of days ago, I was collecting these resources together to create my little toolbox to have everything in one place, and I thought I'd share it with you guys. This list is going to contain every resource you'll ever need for making a game. From high quality textures, to HDRIs, to models, to shaders, to fonts and UI, sound effects, music and ambiance, and a bunch of open source software to import it all into Godot. Because this video is going to be Godot oriented. So I'm going to show you where to get uh, models, animations, shaders, etc. And then I'm going to show you how to convert these to a type that Godot likes and that works effectively in the engine. And then we're going to import that all into Godot, giving you a complete toolbox to build out your project. 90% of these resources are going to be copyright free or open source. So you can do with it whatever you want, even commercially. But I'm also going to be showing a couple of options if you want to spend a little bit of money on your game dev career to get some really high quality assets. But before we get into all of those resources, I'd first like to introduce you to the best resource for learning online, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that makes acquiring knowledge fun and engaging. Brilliant might be just right for you. Brilliant takes a new approach to learning. With their interactive lessons and learning by doing, they turn traditional learning on its head. They use real world challenges to keep you engaged and have an almost game-like feel to the learning experience. Studies show that this method is six times more effective than passive learning, so you'll see results faster. Brilliant isn't about memorization. They focus on building critical thinking skills through problem solving. As you tackle challenges, you'll learn to approach problems creatively and break them down into manageable steps. This skill is crucial, not just for learning new topics, but also in everyday life and your game development journey. We all know learning is important, but finding the time can be tough. Brilliant makes it easy to fit learning into your busy schedule. With their bite-sized lessons, they let you gain valuable knowledge in just a few minutes a day. It's the perfect antidote to mindless scrolling turning your daily commute or coffee break into a productive learning session. So if you're convinced, you can try Brilliant for free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash lucky, or by clicking the link in the description. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash lucky. Now before we get into acquiring all these assets and resources, I'd first like to talk about file organization. Because if you're just going to drop these into your game project, it's going to be a quick mess and you're going to have a bunch of duplicate files and it's just going to be messy all over. Now there are a lot of ways to organize your files in a project. This is just how I like to do it. Everybody has their own way, but I recommend setting up a similar system. So in my main root folder, I have four uh, subfolders, assets, resources, scenes and scripts. Now we're not going to be talking about scenes and scripts. We're just going to be talking about assets and resources. So in the assets folder, I keep all my uh, raw files. So the actual files I download from the internet and I'm subdividing those into fonts, HDRIs, models, sounds, which subfolders, uh, ambiance, music, and sound effects, and then sprites uh, with subfolders, particles, and UI, and textures with a subfolder materials. And then when we're going to be downloading a model or a material which is divided into multiple textures, we're going to be creating their own subfolder within the system. So I'm not just dropping files straight into these folders, I'm actually creating new folders for every material. You'll see how that comes in useful in a minute. Alright, let's start with textures. Uh, these first three are CC0, meaning they're completely open public domain. You can use these textures for whatever. And they're polyhaven.com slash textures, ambient CG, and texture lib. Polyhaven and Ambient CG are very similar. There is beautiful websites with amazing PBR materials, meaning they got roughness included and normal maps and height and ambient. I'll show you how to import those in a second. Polyhaven is also where I get all my HDRIs. These are skyboxes that can be used to light a scene. They're very useful. Then there's also the very famous textures.com. Uh, most of their stuff is free, but when you want high quality or you want to download a lot per day, you do have to pay. So it might not be useful if you're just prototyping or building big games for free. And then if you want textures that are more stylized or more uh, game dev oriented and not, not much realism, uh, I highly recommend the itch asset page. There's a bunch of good assets on itch. Uh, I got a lot of textures here for 2D games, a lot of stylized textures. There is a lot of stuff that is paid here, but also a bunch of stuff that is free. So do browse it if you're looking for something. And two more links I want to talk about are a little bit more uh, use case specific. But the YouTuber Mrs. As If actually has a retro 3D collection. This is a collection of assets for making PSX style slash N64 style uh, games. There's a bunch of models here, sound effects, but also a bunch of textures. They're really cool for game development. Check out this GitHub page. And the last one, you cannot use this for commercial games, but it's so much fun to look around. It's textures resource. 
This is a site that rips textures from popular games and it can be so much fun to just look out how other game devs or old games uh, utilize textures and you can find a bunch of popular textures from all your favorite video games here. Now for images slash textures, Godot supports almost everything. Uh, you can use BMPs, DDSs, uh, PNGs, JPEGs, TGAs, uh, SVGs and even WebP files. But for skyboxes and HRIs, Godot doesn't really support cube maps. It is in there, but I find it very finicky. So I would highly recommend downloading your HDRIs as either HDR or uh, EXR. So now I quickly want to run through setting up a PBR material and an HDRI in Godot. I uh, will use from Polyhaven. Polyhaven is definitely my favorite site to get HDRIs and textures. And we'll use this dry riverbed rock. I'm going to be downloading them at 2K. And the textures you're going to need are the ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic map in one texture. It's just a bit more efficient that way. Uh, we're also going to need the diffuse, which is just the base color. Uh, the displacement, it's optional, I'll show you in a second. And we're going to want the normal map in a GL format. Then in my Godot project, I've imported these textures into a new folder in the textures material folder. And then I'm going to create a new material for them. So under materials, click new, create resource, and we'll use a standard material 3D. Click create, we'll call this dry riverbed rock. We'll double click that uh, resource and then we'll set up all those textures. So from the top, the first one is going to be albedo, which is going to be that diffuse map. So we'll click albedo and load in that diffuse map. And then we'll go into metallicness and load in that uh, combined texture that's going to be called arm. And metallicness is the last channel in the texture. So we'll use the blue channel. Then for roughness, we'll use again that same arm texture and it's going to be the second channel, so it's going to be the green channel. And then for normal map, we're going to enable it and we're going to load in that normal map. And then for ambient occlusion, we're also going to enable that, load in that arm texture again and we'll use the red channel, which is the default. And then for the height, we can use the displacement. Quick load and let's use that displacement. And then in my scene, I'll quickly add a mesh instance just to demonstrate. Create a new plane. And I'm going to drag in that uh, dry riverbed texture. And now you can see uh, all the roughness and normal maps are working correctly. Uh, you can see that height effect. It's almost like a 3D texture. It looks really awesome. And that nice reflection. All right, now let's set up an HDRI. So I'll go back to Polyhaven. Go to Assets, HDRIs, and we'll just grab whatever. I'll grab this. Uh, I really prefer HDRIs with no actual scenery in there, because if you're making a game, that's just a bit weird. So I'll grab this clear, pure sky. EXR is supported by Godot. I'm going to go a little bit lower and download that. And let's drag that into our Godot project and put it in the correct folder, HDRIs. And then in order to use an HDRI, we're going to go back into our scene and add in our environment with the three dots here and click add environment to scene. Click on the environment and in there there will be an environment and then you can change your sky. So we're not going to be using a procedural sky, but we're going to be using a panoramic sky material. And for that panoramic, I'm going to quick load that pure sky. And now you can see you have an Beautiful HDRI loaded, beautiful PBR material. That's how to set it up. Alright, this video is becoming quite long. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, next up, I want to talk about models. We're again going to go back to polyhaven.com slash models. These are the most high quality models you'll ever find. They're amazing. Then another great resource is sketchfab.com. There's a lot of free models to download here and a lot for sale. It's a bit of both and be sure to check the licensing. Then there's CG Traders. And again, uh, model resource. This is the same as textures resource. It's just models ripped from popular video games. Can be a lot of fun to play around with when you're learning. But yeah, you can't use them commercially. And of course, the goat of free game assets, Kenny. So, how do we import models into Godot? Godot does support a lot of different 3D model uh, file types. They even support .blend files. You can drag your whole Blender project in there and it will work. And they support a bunch more formats, but the one you should only use, in my opinion, is GLTF. GLTF packs uh, textures and animations all into one file, and it is the most supported by Godot. A lot of different file types have given me huge headaches in Godot, 
with uh, GLTFs work straight out of the box, perfect. And so what would I do if I find a model in another format, for example from Sketchfab or CG Traders, there's a lot of FBX and OBJs on there. And my workflow has always been just import it into Blender, Blender will take almost any format and then export it again as a GLTF. They just make sure that your textures are packed in there, everything is working correctly, and trust me it's going to save you a bunch of headaches. Next up is shaders. Shaders can add a lot of awesome effects to your game and really elevate the visuals of any uh, Godot game. And there's only two real resources for this for Godot and it's shadertoy.com and go.shaders. Setting up shaders and using shaders is not as simple as simply drag and dropping shaders into your project and then they work. Uh, they do require a bit of setup, but I've created a full tutorial on custom post-processing effects and shaders, uh, which I'll link down below. This also goes over downloading shaders from go.shaders.com and using them in your game, so be sure to check that out. Next up, let's talk about UI and fonts. The best place for finding free fonts is fonts.google.com. Uh, it's basically meant for web development, but you can also use it for game development. You can easily browse fonts there and it will even match up fonts with other fonts to get like combinations that work really well. The selection is a little bit limited, so if you're looking for like an awesome title font or something different for your game, uh, check out Da Fonts. That's dafonts.com. They have every single font you could ever imagine. It's an amazing place, but a lot of there is licensed. So again, be sure to double check your licensing and see when you have to pay or when something is uh, public domain. Godot supports almost every font type, but my preferred type is TTF, which both of these sites supply. Next up is sound effects. There's only two websites I use for sound effects and they're zapsplat.com and sfxr.me. SFXR is a sound effect generator, it's a synthesizer, so all the sound effects will sound a bit retro slash uh, Game Boy era. But it's a generator so you can tweak it to whatever you like and you can get a bunch of awesome sounding sound effects out of this. And the second one is Zepsplat. Zepsplat is a great resource for a bunch of sound effects. I've never gone to Zepsplat looking for a sound effect and not found it. All their sound effects are super high quality and mastered really well. And you can get everything for free, but there is also a paid version. Uh, be sure to check the licensing. But yeah, great, great resource. Do browse it a little bit and you'll see what I mean. Next up is music and ambiance. Uh, these are very hard to get right. There is a lot of free royalty free music online, but it's usually catered towards uh, video making or background music and not really to game creation. The best recommendation I can give you is to look out for the Humble Bundle. Uh, Humble Bundles sometimes have game dev packs or sound packs and I bought one uh, last year and it gave me like 200 gigabytes of game music that I can use. But if you're looking for something in a pinch, uh, Pixabay slash music is a great site and it does supply uh, licensing files even if you want to upload something to YouTube so that your video doesn't get taken down. They also have some ambient background sounds for your game. And for ambient sounds, uh, there's a bunch on YouTube which claims to be royalty free, but sometimes even ambient sounds can be copyrighted. So do really watch out with licensing with uh, audio. And yeah, be on the lookout for these big ass music packs that come out for uh, game devs. And finally, I'd like to talk a bit about software I use for development. I'm very picky about my software. I really like all my software to be open source when possible. And I highly prefer lightweight software. So software that's really small and very responsive. And so with that in mind, I use for all my 3D modeling. Blender, of course, it's one of the best pieces of software ever made. Uh, Paint.net for all my image editing. It's this super small image editor. Krita for digital painting and texture painting. This is only effective if you're uh, into digital painting, but yeah, then I use that and Caden Live for video editing. It's this small open source video editor. It works great if you need to make a trailer or want to make devlogs for your game. Highly recommend it. Super fast, super lightweight and free. And finally for audio, I do Audacity and Adobe Audition, which is a paid software, but it's just for voice recording for videos. So you might not need that, but yeah, Audacity has crashed on me a bunch of times and it was just very annoying. But yeah, for sound effects and game audio, I use Audacity and for video creation, I use uh, Adobe Audition. All right, so that's all the software and resources I use for game development. All my projects have been made with these resources. I really hope this can be useful in your game dev career. And if you have any fun or awesome resources, drop them in the comments, I'd love to see them. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.